welcome back to Hardcore Ultimate Iron Man. I've been doing a bit of AFK melee training down here at Sand Crabs with the fantastic gear set of full rock shell with a thieving cape and a damaged book. It's, it's good enough. Ultimately, if I want to AFK again, I really should go to Fossil Island for the better crabs. Since we were getting to a point where there were no sand crabs available at this three spot here. With all that training, we got base 70s in the melee stance. So that's pretty good. That opens up a few options that we could go for at some point. But for now, we are still laser focused in on recipe for disaster. And the last piece of that puzzle is desert treasure. And to do that, we have the tourist trap and Temple of Ikov. Starting from the top, the Temple of Ikov. Also, while we were here, we got another stamina potion from trading in a torstal. And I've already collected the Limpert Roots, which we're going to need for Temple of Iconv. So let's go get this all packed back how I like it, and get over to the quest start. The quest starts over here in Ardoin, with a hooded figure in the bar named Lucian, who seeks a hero to go on an important mission. And that is definitely me. He's looking for the Staff of Armadil in the Temple of Ikov, northeast of here. It's a dangerous temple. There's monsters and all that. Sounds good. And so we click the wrong option here. Now that's not too dangerous. I can manage. And the reward for getting this staff for him, as I am a mercenary type, will be a reward. Well, at least it's going to be something. So that's a start. The monster in there can only be killed with a weapon of ice, and also other problems. But first, we need a pendant to enter the Chamber of Fear. The fact that this dungeon has a Chamber of Fear is not a good start, but okay. Either way, he is leaving to go to his house near Edgeville. And we are heading to this so-called temple with his pendant. Really convenient that he has a pendant that allows us to enter this dungeon. And how did we fall off that log? We have 80 agility, my goodness. Anyways. Here is the temple in question. We just head down the ladder. It's much less impressive down on this side. Down there is an optional location, which wasn't very optional when the quest first came out. You needed, down here, Boots of Lightness in order to get your weight into the negatives to cross this rickety bridge. With Graceful, we are well and truly under zero, even with an inventory just jammed full of stuff. So we can avoid falling in the lava, because <laughs> that's what would happen if you're not prepared for that. Grab the lever here, which be aware, that also weighs something, but we are still significantly in the clear. 
And then we just run over here. And we can use this lever. Or is it the other side? Oh, here it is. Lever bracket. Put it in. Pull it down. And that opens these gates. Some hidden machinery. So now we can go through here. And this is an important next step. Because this is where we find the ice weapon to take down the monster in here. In a cavern full of ice spiders. Which we're going to probably eventually need to put on protect from melee here. We can find a whole bunch of chests. Which we open and search and usually find nothing. Go on the power enemy for, enemy for some more defense here, I suppose. Running all around this area to the multiple chests. Searching each one. Trying to find what we're looking for. A very energy intensive situation. And it is ice arrows. And then, every time you pick up some ice arrows, there's now ice arrows in a different chest for some reason. So we need to keep running around here, looting the chests, until we have enough ice arrows. How many ice arrows is enough ice arrows is another question. So we're just going for like 20, I guess. Should be good. Running out of run energy, though, does slow things down. But there's always the chance that you can just get ice arrows back to back in the same chest, which would be nice. Now we have seven. So yeah, we keep running around in here, getting attacked by spiders, looting arrows, until I have about 20. Managed to get the back-to-back -back arrows after the last chest. So we end up with 27. A very solid amount. And now, we need stuff to fire these arrows and range gear. Just to speed it up. What we're going to do things a little bit differently here. Previously, I've went around purchasing green dehyde and all that, but that's really not going to get the job done anymore. Just kind of getting done with buying green dehyde, traveling to all the shops, when we can get something just as good and store it here in the house. Namely, we want spined. And to get that, we'll be doing some combat. Although I don't think these are really going to help us too much. Since I think we're going to be going with the prayer angle here. Just because it's going to be in multi-combat against reasonably high level enemies. So we can grab some monks robes or something. Probably our best bet. Or we could buy initiate I guess. Yeah. Well I will see which one of those is better. But I will get a setup here. So we can be off to Dagonoth's. Okay, as prepared as I'll ever be, heading to Water Birth Island. Got a super attack, a couple prayer potions. I could do a bit more if I went to the Warrior's Guild and got a strength potion, or just went ahead and got a dragon battle axe. But this should be fine for now. The setup is very much focusing on prayer. Monk robes are just as good as the initiate. 
but they weigh less. So this works out. Artic Cloak, the Damage Book, for a total of a 24 prayer bonus, which isn't bad. Also, I'm not going to be able to get in here. Went and got the Pet Rock, which allows me to open up these doors myself. Also got a Strength Potion, because why not? Seems worth it. I'm going to go in. I don't mind dying. First section of this room is full of melee guys, which we need for the hides, only later. We're going after the specific drops from over here with the range guys. We hit very hard. Drop the pet rock, walk over here, open the door, take the rock, and head inside. Super attack, strength, and the level 88 Dagonoth. These are the ones that can drop what we're looking for. The various bits to make spined. And we're going to make sure we keep our prayer on, because we are wearing monk robes, and they provide no defense whatsoever. Should only be ranged guys in here, so we should be okay. That's the theory, at least. Oh, they run away. That be that could be awkward. A fire talisman. Okay. And before we even drink our first prayer dose, there is the circular hide. That is one of them that we need. And we also need the boots and the gloves in order to actually be able to use anything here. I'm timing my repotting with the Dragon Mace special attack, which also does good damage too, so that's a plus. Circular hide. Very good. And there are the spined boots. Also, due to inventory space, I went out to the main room to get a singular Dagonoth hide to use with this circular hide. Now we got spined boots. That is, well, at least once we make these together, two out of five pieces. And the spined equipment is made by Sigley the Huntsman. Spined armor. Looking for a fine helm. 5,000 coins and the materials. And there we go. One spined helmet. I already put the boots in the house. And I'm bringing three prayer potions this time. So this should all work out even better. And here is the stretched hide. So cheap it doesn't even register on my incredibly low amount drop indicators. Only worth 5,000 on the GE, apparently. Thought I had it set to 5,000, but sure. Either way, that is the second piece we need. And that one needs two Dagonoth hides to go with it. So let's head back out to the main room here and try to get that sorted. Stretched hide, two Dagonoth hides, and that makes powerful leg armor. Spine chaps. And now, we just need the body and the gloves. Well, it's not one of the drops I was expecting to get. We got a warrior helmet. That is one in 2,000. And a decent elk. Theoretically, I could get the Fremnic helms whenever I wanted to do some combat. But I can't put those in my house, so not quite as nice. Now we can put away the helm and the chaps, so that's good. 
And there is the spined gloves. So now we just need the final hide for the final piece. We already have one duplicate hide that we've gotten. So hopefully we don't get too many more of those. And there is another one in 2000 warrior helm drop before getting a one in 64 the final high that we need well that is more elk fodder i suppose not gonna complain too much about that more money also got a fremnic blade which is technically not tradable so it gives a high elk warning as long as you've set it to warn about untradables. Either way, spined gloves in the hole. Now we just need the body. Just need the body. And there is the flattened hide. That is the one we need. So we are good to Pulling ourselves out over into this room instead and fight these Dagonoths to get the regular Dagonoth hides to finish this up. The three more regular Dagonoth hides and we can make some sturdy body armor and 10,000 coins but that's not important. There is full spined. So let's go check out this armor. I got a genie random event. That's going in Herblore. No surprises there. Let's look at these stats. Right off the bat, the boots and gloves are basically useless. Despite being part of a ranged armor set, they give no range attack bonus whatsoever and absolutely pitiful amounts of defense. Realistically, the climbing boots are better than the spined boots in every possible situation. And the spine gloves, we can easily replace with the room gloves because they actually do things. The body and the legs are similar to green dehyde and i think they have the exact same stats as green dehyde used to have before they nerfed all the defenses don't know if they changed the range bonus on it but we have way more melee defense and a bit more range defense than green dehyde so this is technically even better than just going to the shop and the spine helmet is a lot better than a coif. Equal in range attack to the archer helm, but much worse in the defenses. And it also gives a whole bunch of negatives to all other accuracies. But it's not like I'm really going to go around meleeing in a spined helm. But I could but I won't. So that takes care of the armor. We can easily put this in our house. Put the boots and gloves back in because they're useless. Their only use is allowing us to store things in the house, I suppose. But now, we have the main issue here. The ice arrows. These require a U or better bow in order to fire. So, U short bow, U long bow, magic short bow, magic long bow, U and magic comp bows, maybe a dark bow. A lot of options, but not really. We're going to be getting a U bow, and there are actually a few options for this. We could go into the Whirlpool dungeon fight the undead barbarians like we did to get the mithril grapple 
We could do medium clue scrolls. We could hunt, I believe it's young implings. But since we have the option available, I feel like I might as well make use of it. 60 fletching with a plus five boost. That's a U short bow right there. Is this going to be faster than just trying to get the drop somewhere else? Probably not. But hey, why not? Also, I put the pet rock in here, which is great. So we have four pets now, if you want to be incredibly technical about it. So we need the Hellcat, we need Karambwanjis, Stews, a U-Log, a Bowstring, and we can make this short bow. I need to bring attention to how absolutely hilarious the chat head with the spined helmet is. The other eye is blocked by the nose bridge at this angle. And this helmet looks very strange. I'm getting stews. 65 Fletching has been boosted. You, short bow. This whole process could have been sped up a bit if I wasn't just using four inventory spaces. But that's okay. That's okay. We've got a ranged weapon that can fire the ice arrows. So let's go fire them. That's what we're here for. Back down into the temple. We got our pendant on so we can go into the chamber of fear. Very dangerous with all its skeletons, I guess. And this time, instead of going over and getting the lever, we get further in to this other lever, which is on trap door, which is obvious trap. Disable it, pull that lever, and it opens up the next door. We got some broken arrows. Everything's kind of burnt. And then in here, things are even more burnt. We are facing off against the fire creature. Fire warrior guy. Of the Sarkus. Sure. We've got our ice arrows and our accumulator. So we just kind of sit here and shoot. We should have more than enough in the prayer and arrows department. So this isn't much of a fight. Once again, old quest with single combat style enemy. Not a huge deal. The amount of effort we had to put in to get to this point though. That's just how it is. But now that we're here, we are just annihilating the fire warrior. He's level 84. We're level 87 now. Getting stats up and all that. Just a few more shots. And then we get to move on to the next part of this. Goodbye, fire warrior. Now we can open this door. Next obstacle. Winelda. The witch. I want to get further in here, past this lava, and she has the power to do so. With a magic trick, we can just be teleported to the other side. And in order for her to do that for us, we of course need to do something for her. She wants 20 limpert roots. Which we have. Ta-da. We were prepared. Unfortunately, 
the new the roots need to be unnoted and all at the same time so we need to make 20 inventory spaces to unnote 20 limpwort roots so we're going to need a looting bag here being a bit tactical here we're going to put these items in the looting bag and keep these ones this will allow for teleporting around still have a torstal out we need the limpert roots all right the limpert roots are going to be these 20. so i guess we could keep something else uh keep the dragon scimitar oh that's gonna be the looting bag actually so no these will be unnoted, filling up these 20 spaces, and the rest of the stuff goes in the bag. Well, that should work. Now that means we're not going to have any real weapons here, because we're putting away the scimitar, and the bow, and the mace, and the amulet. But the combat we have coming up I can whack them with the Dramon Staff and it'll be just fine. So that's a non-issue. Could also grab some Graceful to fill this out. That'd be good. Either way though, kept the Arty Cloak here so I could quickly get back here. Although we need to go to a bank first, so yeah. Unnoting some Limpet Roots. Okay, Winelda, I've got your Limpert Roots. And then, with a bit of magic, we are over here now. Honestly, could probably just jump that, but sure. Here we have a wall we can push open. Here are the Guardians of Armadil. We've been tasked to collect the Staff of Armadil, so I'm just going to take that. But we're attacked. Luckily, they're only level 43, so I can just beat them to death with this Staff. Not the quickest way to do things here. But it gets the job done. Doing an absolutely horrible job prayer flicking. But of course, it doesn't matter. We're so much stronger. This legendary artifact of incredible power, presumably, looks like an earth staff just sitting on a table down in a dungeon, being protected by level 43s. But that's not my problem. Yoink. The power of the staff causes it to vibrate gently. Not harshly, just gently. Just gently vibrating. And that's what we need to do. Head back to Edgeville. Where Lucian said he was going. Here's his house. Open the door. He's level 14. I have gotten the Staff of Armadillo. Here you go. Wahahahaha. Very powerful staff. Everyone will bow down before him. And our reward is to be granted much power. In the form of one quest point, 10,500 range XP, and 8,000 fletching XP. Pretty solid amount of XP from that. Not gonna complain. Any levels? No. No levels. We are very close to a range level. Going to drop these ice arrows. Don't need those. Also the pendant. Unnecessary. But now, there's only one more quest left before Desert Treasure, and that is the Tourist Trap. So let's go and get everything we need for that. Incredibly conveniently, Everything that we need for this quest can be purchased right here at the Shanty Pass 
shop. We're going to need a few water skins since we're heading out into the desert. Desert clothes, a few bronze bars, some feathers, a hammer, and a shanty pass to get inside. Really is incredibly convenient. Let me walk on through. Apparently that's the first time we've ever entered the desert here. I guess. And talk to Irina. She is very upset because her daughter has gone missing in the desert. She's lost, or even worse, just a few days ago, and she said she would be back yesterday, but she hasn't returned. Starting the tourist trap quest. I will go find her. And the only hint we have is there are some footprints leading out into the desert, towards the desert mining camp. See if we can pick up this trail here. Heading south. There are five sets of footprints. One lighter than the other. And the other four with heavy boots. If we assume the first set was the daughter, that doesn't bode particularly well. Continually following the footprints this way, and we find a cactus with a scarf on it. This was Anna's red scarf that Arena mentioned. And the footprints lead right here to all the mercenaries at the mining camp. Now would be the time where we beat up the mercenary captain, take his key, and just go in. But for whatever reason, we are going to go along with what a level 45 wants us to do. So we need to talk to... or 47 even. So instead of just running straight in and getting this done, we need to be slightly diplomatic about it. I'm not going to tell them what we're actually here looking for. We're just going to get a little bit of information here. And a bit of bribing for said information. This place is a prisoner camp for al -Karid, Where they mine a bunch of stuff. And I want to take a look around. That's not going to happen, because the captain won't let us inside. And he's the only one that has the key. Also, if we try to talk to him, he'll just have all of his mercenaries beat us up. Unless he has a use for us. He's trying to t track down Al Zaba Basim. And so, if we could offer our services, perhaps we could get in his good books. It's a decent idea. So, let's talk to the mercenary captain. Wow, a real captain. I'd love to work for a tough guy like you. We we're absolutely buttering him up. Certainly there's something I can do for a strong captain like you. Find Al Zaba Basim. I don't think I can do that. Be gone. 
Captain that can't even fight his own battles. Very well. This is the challenge I want. I will get it. And we're going to beat him to death with our Dramon Staff. He's got a significant amount of hit points. But we have Protect from Melee, so... Really doesn't matter, does it? We are A-OK -okay to beat him down. This, of course, would be quicker if we actually had a weapon. But it's not too important. We'll manage just fine. And once we kill him, we get his key. And we can head inside. There are a lot of dialogue options in this quest that mess you up. Buttering him up, then pretending to be incompetent, and then getting him to not sick his mercenaries on us. That is the required order of things. Now we have the key. We need to take off all of our other items and head through the gate. We get searched. Apparently not very well since they let us keep all these things on us. But here we are, further inside. First order of business in here is talking to one of the slaves here. We have just arrived, and they're working on a plan to get out of here. They have all the details figured out, except for one. And that one thing that's a problem is the bracelets that are making him be stuck here. You can't climb out of here while he's in shackles and all that. I can undo them. And for our help, I want your slave robes. A strange trade, but this will work in our favor. So I can gain access deeper into the mines. I'm either incredibly brave or incredibly stupid. But he is all for this silly plan of ours. So let's give it a go. Click. And now we trade clothes. Flea infested robe, sweat, so sweat soaked muddy shirt, smelly decomposing boots. Fantastic. And now, we are perfectly equipped. He's gonna go escaping. Good luck on that. And now we are looking the part. Before we head further down, we can search the table here for the cell door key. So if we ever get thrown into prison here, we might be able to use that to escape. But now we will head down to the lower area. Only slaves are going down, so we might be able to sneak down since we look the part now. Everyone down in here is mining away, having a very hard time of it, as you might expect. Loop around this way. Further and further into here. Until we get to the next obstacle. The guards here won't let us go to a different area. So we will 
try to convince them to let us go through. They want something different to eat. Very specifically, a fresh, ripe, and juicy pineapple from the Tenties. If you get my meaning. In order for us to get through here, we need to get him a pineapple. How he expects us to get that is a good question. But for whatever reason, the guards seem to let us do what we want a little bit more than you might expect. So we just need to run out of here. Back out of the mine. Which it doesn't seem like they really typically let the slaves leave the mine, but here we go. And we're going to make a daring escape through the prison by bending these cell windows here and escaping. Let me climb up some rocks. Get a nice different angle for that, I suppose. And climb up a cliff. Nobody seems to mind us just barging on in here. Or barging on out of here, I suppose. If we went through the gate, I think it's likely they would try to stop me from leaving. Typically when a slave tries to leave the front gate, it doesn't go very well. So we need to get a pineapple. From the group right over here through the desert. Ignore all the wolves and camels. Cactuses. And we just waltz right in here. As we do. Talk to their leader here. And we are greeted on behalf of the Bedouin Nomads. I'm looking for a pineapple. Of which they are very famous for. And as per usual, we can get one if we do them a favor. The captain at the mining camp has some secret information that they very much would like to get their hands on. Details of an ancient weapon. They will share this information with us. All we have to do is go get it. They have a key for his chest, somehow. So we just need to sneak in there, distract him, and grab the plans. Another key to our inventory. We're getting quite the collection at this point. And back to the camp. For whatever reason, nobody seems to care about the slave coming back. We just go through the gates, nobody minds. It's, it's a whole thing out here. Anyways. To see the captain here. They are up here on the upper floor. And before we go through this plan, we need to search some bookcases. To find a lot of books about sailing. Not going to get much sailing done out here in the middle of the desert. So now we try to open his chest here. Clearly, he wants to know what we are doing here. And I just wanted to have a chat. About all your books. You seem to be interested in sailing. 
is very interested to talk about his passions. I can tell by the cut of your jib. Really? Really. He's talking about days when he did sailing. He's quite distracted now. So he rambles on about all that. We just grab the plans. Presumably he was less talking to us than just carrying on about his past adventures. Because he didn't even notice us just opening his chest right next to him. Sure. There's the technical plans. And we're just going to leave again, hurt ourselves slightly, and head back to the bed of him. Plans returned, as we are asked to do. Very technical. So they're going to have us try to manufacture this item. Very interested. Bronze bars, feathers, a hammer. And we can help out. They've got an anvil over in the other tent. So we can go use it to make use of these plans. Right over here. An experimental anvil for experimenting. We can give it a shot. Follow the plans. Yes. Tap, tap, tap. Experimenting. And we follow it carefully. We managed to forge a dart tip. Add a feather to it. And we make a giant mess of the whole thing. There is the possibility of failing to do these. Give it another shot. And we're successful in creating a prototype dart. Unlike any other smithing and fletching process, where you just make it right or can't make it at all. That's why it's an experimental weapon and all that. It's a dart. Ta-da! And now, we can make darts. That's pretty cool. And we get some more advanced techniques. So we won't mess it up so much in the future. And a reward is also six darts. So that's fun. And the pineapple. Which is what we came here for in the first place. Now, we can just go bring this right on back to that guard. And now, we'll have even more free reign of these tunnels. One pineapple. Delicious and juicy. So now we can head on through. In this room, we've got a winch bucket, a whole bunch of barrels, and a minecart to head further in. I'm going to search this barrel and take one because it's cool. Jump in the minecart. Bump our shins. Or our knee, I suppose. Why we're making this such a complicated maneuver when we can just gently get inside the minecart. I'm not sure. We're trying to be fancy here. Must be a... I mean, it can't be that low of a roof because we're still sitting up in the minecart. But no, we, we couldn't just walk across here. That'd be ridiculous. So we ride the minecart into another area. Even more miners looking even worse for wear. 
We just run on in here to find Anna. And without talking to her, or explaining the plan, or doing anything, we just put her in a barrel. It's for your own good. She wants out of the barrel. But that's not how this is going to go. It's like a kidnapping. Only good, I guess. Anyways. We're getting her out of here. By putting the barrel in the cart. Sending it back to the other room full of barrels. And then we need to follow. Once the cart gets back. They're being very productive. And people continue to not bother trying to stop me from doing whatever I want here. Back in the cart. We ride. Back through the tunnel. We got the cart track sign that says, not safe for humans. It hasn't stopped us. Not going to stop us. And we're out. We find the barrel with Anna in it. She still wants to be let out. That's still not the plan, though. Put it on the winch. And the guard is going to help us out with this very heavy looking barrel. Interesting that they think it's heavy when typically it'd be full of rocks. And Anna has to make comments about this, which the guard hears. She calls him an ignoramus. You're very gregarious. Anyways. We finally get Anna on the lift. But nobody is up there to lift it up. So we are going to make use of our ability to just go wherever we want to head back up to the top. I understand that we didn't tell Anna what the plan was here, but realistically we couldn't have, since there were just guards all over the place that wouldn't take kindly to us staging this whole getting her out of here. They don't stop me. Not that they could if they wanted to. We come back up to the top. And we'll be the one that operates the winch as well. Pull in the barrel. Out of the hole. And really, really wants to not be in a barrel anymore. We're almost there. We're almost there. Then we just pop Anna in the wooden cart here. And we have to be quick about this because we're now out in the desert heat. And she's still in there, so mine cart driver. Nice cart. And now we're going to use a series of puns to get on his good side. One wagon wheel says to another, I'll see you around. One good turn deserves another. I'm not trying to get you fired. Shot, perhaps. I'm in for a penny, in for a pound. He very much likes puns, and I can work with that. Well, you see, it's like this. Now that we have attention, prison riot, 10 minutes. You gotta get out of here. That's a pretty serious situation. But you have to bring me too, please. Quickly, get on the cart. 
Can do. Yep. And he speeds out past the gates. We jump off with Anna. And it really is that easy. Between getting all the guards on our side from the very beginning, tricking all the checkpoints and the mine camp captain, using things we're not supposed to use, gaining full access to the entire place, then tricking the getaway driver. has been a master of manipulation down here in the desert. Here's Anna. She's still in the barrel, and now she's out. Overall, the barrel wasn't too bad. A barrel of laughs. She also has a key for one of the other tunnels down there. That we get. Because of, of course, we get more keys. As a reward, we're gonna get two bits of experience. We get in fletching, agility, smithing, or thieving. Well, thieving is clearly out. That's, that's not what we need. Agility, we're already level 80. Smithing is incredibly fast with gold. So I think we're gonna, just, just gonna do fletching. 4,600 XP, another 4,600 XP. Not bad. You can do this quest much earlier when you have much lower levels and that experience actually matters. But we just never got around to it. So there is two more quest points. We can go back to the mining camp if we wanted to. You can make darts, got our experience. Very good. And now we can clean up the inventory a bit here. We're not going to need slave robes or bronze bars, or any of these keys or a hammer or feathers or darts, empty water skins. And realistically, we're going to need other things here too. If we check the looting bag, we've got 12 of our items still stuck in here. And these could be useful. So let's go get them back. This might be the most items we've had to retrieve from the looting bag at one time. So yet again, out into the wilderness. Requires to be on the third step here. Destroy the looting bag. The contents will be lost. Nope, they just go on the ground. And we pick up all of our stuff. And we're out. Okay. We might need to grab another looting bag to put some stuff in. It all will depend on how we do, how much food and such we're going to need. Because we're heading to Desert Treasure. All stats, all quests completed. So it's going to get interesting. Next time. Goodbye.